So I'm going to assume the homework is going really well. Now what's going to happen today is I'm going to go through a much slower a lot of the things that we went over last time. The last time I just want to kind of get a feel for where people were with understanding decimals. And I've had time to grade some homework from this section in between then and now. And that also helped me figure out I need to go back and go a lot slower. So, um, so what I really need from you today, and actually this is every day, is to be quiet. <laughs> All right, so if you need to go out and have a conversation, great. If you want to talk about math, that's sweet. If you want to ask a question, feel free. You don't have to stay quiet as long as you're asking me constructive questions about what we're talking about. Um, if you totally understand this stuff, continue to get ahead in your homework, awesome. Or head out. That's cool. It's college. You don't have to be here if you don't want to. Um, so as I go through this, there's going to be, if you have your book with you, you can follow along. There's little questions along the way. And there's also questions I'm going to have you guys work on as we do this. Um, but I do want to kind of slow down and make sure everybody's with me on all this stuff. What page is this? Uh, page 85. This is page 85 in the book. So if you have that with you. So. Decimals are obviously necessary, but in order to, since they are necessary, we have to know how to work with them. Uh, decimals, in one sense, are another way to write certain fractions, and that's what I've said before. So, for example, if I have one tenth, that of course is a decimal. Is what is that as a decimal? How do I write one tenth as a decimal? 0 0.1, 11. And 1 one hundredth would be? Yeah, because this is the tenths place. So right here, you can see that's the tenths place. The next one after the decimal point is the hundredths place, and so forth. And when you describe this in your homework, you do have to put that TH at the end. If you say eight hundreds, what does that really mean? Yeah, it means eight hundreds. It means eight hundred. So you, if you say eight hundredths, what does that mean? Zero point zero eight. Good. So you got to be really careful. So on some of you guys' homework, I've put that THS and kind of circled it or underlined it. That makes the distinction about what side of the decimal place am I on. Now my THS is going to be down here. That's parts. This is whole numbers. That's not going to have the THS on it. Okay, cool. Um, oh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. So how to write this decimal in words. The whole number part should be easy enough by now, right? So 143, so 143. Right? Oop. I'm not most used to using this thing, by the way. So if I ever am writing and you can't see what I'm writing, just say something. That would suck for me to do a whole thing. We didn't see anything. You just did. Um, let's see if I can work together with the camera. Yeah, so now I just say and, and then I forget about this first part. I've taken care of the first part. The and is kind of like, you can think of it as a word for that decimal place. Whole number, decimal place is and, and now you can write in words what the, what the decimal part is. So like Charles said, what place is this 56 in? Thousands. Good. So, and 56. Put a T in there, Jeff. It's 56 thousandths. Cool. All right, how are we doing so far? Sweet. Now, if I ask you, where is that five? What place is that five in? Hundreds. Now, but if I say, where is the 56? That is in the thousandths place. You with me? And, and the same thing happens with whole numbers. If I have uh, 87,000, 87 is in the thousand, thousands place, right? No TH. You guys with me? But what place is the 8 in? 10,000. Uh, so when we start looking at uh, more than one digit, we look to this to tell me what place I'm really in. 
Same thing here, when I look at 56, I look at the six to tell me what place I'm really in. Don't worry about the fives and the tens place, the tenths place, that's nice. The six tells me the 56 is in the hundredths place, or the thousandth place here, sorry. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I'm gonna knock my camera over. Blah, blah, blah. So, you have to be able to go the other way also. What is the whole part on that one down here for this example? My poor little camera. There we go. That'll make you sick if you watch it too much. Good. So the whole part is right in front of the and. That and is like the point, the decimal point. So 106. Yeah, 500. So I know I've got to be, the 5 has got to be in the hundreds place, and then I fill in the rest with the placeholder zeros. How are we doing so far? Cool, cool, cool. So when they say write it in English, I do not want to see, I'm not picking on anybody, but somebody did this, 106.05 written in words. So what they really mean is write in words the description of the places that these numbers are in. So 0 0.05, not good enough, right? Five hundredths, that's good. Uh, okay. So now if we go between uh, decimals and fractions. So decimals are really just specific fractions. They really are. Oh, you gotta remember this. Since our number system is based on 10, then any fractions that are based on parts of 10 or 100 or 1,000, any, any multiples of 10, they can be written as decimals. They can be written as part of our number system. Our number system is based on 10, so if I have 2 tenths, I should be able to write that as part of our number system. I should be able to write that as a line of numbers, right? So 2 tenths, of course, would be 0.2. But if I have 4 fifths, can I write that as 0.4 or something or 0.04? Why not? And you're all like, well, Jeff, because of what you just said, man. And you still do it at 2 tenths? I mean, 0. Well, 2 tenths is 0 0.2 because it's out of 10. It's out of some multiple of 10. Now, what's wrong with the 4 trying to get into our number system? It's just five. Yeah, it's out of 5. It's no good. So what could I do with the 4 fifths? Go to tenths. How do I go to tenths? 2 times 5. Yeah, times 2 times 2, so I get 8 tenths. So 4 fifths, if I want to write it, and do you guys understand what I mean when I say as a part of our number system? I mean not a fraction. I mean just a nice straight number. In order for it to be a part of our number system, it has to be out of 10. So 8 tenths is now what? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. So, of course, the connection to make there is if you did in your calculator 4 divided by 5, what would you get? 0.8. So there's two ways to look at it. That's how to write 4 fifths in our base 10 number system, but that's also what 4 divided by 5 is because the calculator is going to give me numbers that are in our number system. Yes, sir. So um, any fraction that can be reduced to four fifths is going to be point. Zero. Exactly. I love it. That's the whole idea of reducing. Forty fiftieths is point eight because it reduces to four fifths. I love it. Cool. Yes, sir. When we divide four over five, it means a point eight. Beautiful. I love it. Um, so how would I write this? as a fraction, 0.21. How do I write that as a fraction? Exactly, because now you can just base it off the place. So it's easy to go the other way, because there already is, basically, that is a fraction. Start realizing that decimals really are just special types of fractions. It doesn't mean that they are suddenly inherit all the problems fractions have. Don't we'll freak out about that. But it's easy to write it as a fraction, 21 out of 100, because that's the place it's in. And what about so this one? Good, 11 out of 1,000. Cool, Charles. No, I was just thinking, so anything over the 10, probably would end up in the hundreds, anything over a certain amount of numbers. Exactly. In fact, the number of zeros tells you how far, how deep it goes. If it's 2 out of 10, it's only got one zero, so it's only one place in. If it's out of 100, it's two places in. If it's out of 1,000, it's three places in. 
So there's a lot of a lot of ways fruit. A lot of ways to say the same thing, but it's kind of nice they all come back to the same thing, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Da-da-da-da-da. Oh, uh, let me say something up here too. Let me see if you guys are with me on this. If I say four one hundred plus two times ten, that that of course is what? Four hundred twenty. There's 400, so a 4 goes in the 100 spot. There's 210, so a 2 goes in the 10 spot, right? Okay. Special number for some of us. Uh, if I have 3, well, let me do this a different way. If I have um, 250s plus 5 eighths, does that count? Can I somehow write 25 or something? I could write 4 twenties and 5 eighths, and I write 25 for 400s and 2 tens. But again, the same thing here, isn't it? To work into our number system, that has to be a certain number of hundreds or something. So 2 times 50, of course, is also 100. And 5 times 8 is also 40, 4 tenths. So then I can write it as 140. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that 4 fifths, I could not write that as 0.4. I can't just put a 4 somewhere because it's not based out of 10. Here, I can't just put a 2 and a 5 somewhere because neither one is based out of 10. It's the same thing, both sides of the decimal place. Same thing. Cool. Okay. So if we go down here. Oh. So we all hopefully we all know this. Eight point five is the same thing as eight point five oh. Same thing as eight point five oh 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 oh. Okay. And in this problem here, where is the decimal? Where's the decimal in, in the number 15? After yeah, after the 5. It's understood to be there. And if we really wanted to make a point of this, we could put 00, like 15 bucks. So a lot of times I've noticed when I'm doing a class somewhere, higher level class, somebody has trouble when they have to like start moving the decimal around. They don't know where it is. They don't know where to start moving it. And of course, for a whole number, it's always after that last digit, after the ones place. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so now let's talk about rounding. Decimals don't do anything to the process of rounding. It's just now there's more places that you have to know. So when I say round to the nearest thousands place, we know where that is. But if I say round to the, to the nearest thousandths place, we're not as used to that. We're not as comfortable. So in this problem, 63.782, where is, what number is in the hundredths place? Eight. Eight. Now the process of rounding does not change. It can never change. So if I want to round to that place, what number do I look to? The two. The two. And since the two, of course, is less than five, how do I round this to the nearest hundredths? 63 point, beautiful, I like it. Now you're not wrong if you put a zero here, but sort of technically you're wrong, but you're not wrong, it's still the same number. But they really want it to end at the hundredths place when they say this. How are we doing so far? So what about, um, uh, they gave us that, oh here we go, perfect. So how do I write, well, let me give you one more example of this, actually, before I go there. All right. Yeah. So round this to the nearest 10,000th. Oh, I'll put that on the screen. You guys cool? I didn't feel like writing the words out. 10,000th place. And round it to the nearest uh, thousandth. And then round to the nearest ones. So nearest ten thousandths, nearest thousandths, and nearest ones. If you are wondering, no, my handwriting does not get better when I use some other implement. 
which is all too obvious. So let me see, where is the ten thousandths place here? Yeah, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So of course, for part A, what would that be then? I want to round to this place. So the three tells me to leave that two alone, so that would be 14.7892. I leave that two alone. So now that's to the nearest tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. And you can put a zero if you want to, but don't. So what about thousandths? Where's numbers in the thousandths place? Careful now. That's tens, hundreds, thousandths. Yeah. The nine. Of course, what happens to it then? We can't see the nine. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Look at the two. It stays a nine, so it's 14.79. I love it. Now, here's the one that kind of freaks people out a little bit sometimes when you start going to the whole number part. So nearest ones, what, what number's in the ones place? Good, the four. And what's going to tell me what to do with it? Yeah, the fact that seven is more than five. So what's that going to be then? Fifteen. No, no, no. So, Farouk, you were thinking about rounding this number here, right? But I went around to the nearest ones. This tells me what to do with that number then. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. It's going to roll it over. I was thinking like a speedometer, like a odometer, roll it over to the next number. Cool. So real quick, number two, how would you say this? Now, I always get an, a, a smart ass when I say, how do you say this in English? And I say, 3.621. Uh, how would you write this out in full words? Yeah, good. So three, the decibels and. Now, what place is this whole number, the 621, what place is that in? Thousands, right? It's three out, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So three and 621. Thousands. Put the THS in there. Three hundred, uh, three and six hundred twenty-one thousandths. Cool. One problem I really like in the homework. I think we all should have experience writing checks, and checks are one place where you have to do this. You have to write the whole number part and the fractional part. Of course, the fractional part you write as a number, as a fraction. Here you've got to write it in full, blown-out English. Maybe so, but then they better rent the checks this long, man, <laughs> so I can fit the whole thing in there. Uh, let me see. What about down here? Try to do number. Oh yeah, let me do the do number. Uh, let me see one that's kind of freaky. Oh, I like it. Do number nine. So write that as a decimal. And you can think of it as the point. Yeah, 205 ten thousandths. 205 ten thousandths. Now, I think whoever wrote this wrote this a little bit strange, but they don't want to put an and in there because the and signifies the decimal. So 12 and 205. Now, go out to the ten thousandths place. Let me show you how to be really careful about this. I draw like a little hangman game. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So I know that the last digit has to show up here, right? So I kind of write this backwards, 205, and then I put a zero in for the placeholder. 
because it is kind of weird to try to make it end at the right place. So I always go to where it's supposed to end and start there. It's easier than to work backwards. Are you guys kind of with me? Just to make sure that that five ends up in the right place, start there. Make it end up in the right place to begin with. Yeah, as you try to move over, you're like, oh shit, I got to move it over. Yeah. All right. Now here, I don't like this thing, uh, by the way. <laughs> I'm very old school. I want my blackboard back. I want chalk all over my hands. I don't care. Um, here on this one, so write each decimal as a fraction or a mixed number. Simplest form, right? So do number um, 12. I'll do number 11 and 12. We'll do those. Careful about simplest form. Keep the answers to yourself. I think on this one, the first step is easy. Second step shouldn't be too hard either. What place is this in? Thousands. So it'll be 205 over 1,000. And I can definitely divide both of those by 5. So you divide top and bottom by 5, what do you get? 41 over 200. I like it. 41 over 200. 41 looks very much like a prime number. Maybe. And it is. Cool. Because you can't go any further. How are we doing? Okay. Okay. What about this guy, number 12? Is it 10 by 10? One half. I like it. So the way you treat these are the same way you kind of treat them as you do English. You take the whole number of parts, basically done. It's 10. Not much anything you can do with that. 0.5 is 5 tenths. Of course, like Amar said, you can take 5 tenths and make it 1 half. I like it says 10 and a half. And we all know if I saw 10.5, another way to say it is 10 and a half. We kind of already know these basic, we know a quarter. Very many of us know a third. Does anybody know how to write one third as a decimal? Yeah, 0.333 forever. Right, that's one third is all the 0.3s forever? Cool. All right. <laughs> I love it. Sorry. <laughs> now, here we have the one that's, and, and this is kind of like going along with your homework. You have homework problems where you have to put these inequality symbols in. So when they have the same number of places, it's very easy to tell. For some reason, there's a homework problem that's got 0.12 and 0.15, and almost everybody I've graded has that going the wrong way. I don't know if you're thinking too much about it. You think things have got to change. Guys, way back in the back. Um, now, these have the same number of places. So I'm comparing 36 somethings to 94 of the same thing. So I can just look at 36 and 94. And now I know it's not 36, but it's 36 what's? How would I say that? Thousands. Thousands. So it's 36 somethings and 94 of the same thing. So which one, of course, is bigger? 94. So this is how you write. That is less than that. I like it. It's closer to one. They're both smaller than one. You got to be careful about. You might have 1.7, which is big because it's far away from one. I don't think I've said this in this class yet, but there's some trouble with these two symbols. The one that looks like an L that's just kind of fallen over. Less than, uh, uh, right? So that's less than. It looks like an L that's fallen over. And trust me, I mean, we, we all have some trouble with this sometimes. Not a big deal. That's, that's one of the easiest ways that kind of goes along with my direction thing, L. But uh, 
That's less than. No, no. So what's sort of wrong with number 16? What's kind of wrong? Yeah, it doesn't have the same number of places. So thank God math is cool with me just giving one of them more places. 16 over 100. And here's really what's going on. Point 16 is 16 over 100. If I put a zero on the end, what is that now? 160 over 1,000. But of course, what does that reduce to? The same thing. So that's why I'm allowed to add zeros on the end of a decimal as much as I want to. So if I put that zero there, which one's bigger now? 160 is bigger than 156. Cool. Now, of course, the only way they can make this difficult then is to bring negatives into play. Because with negatives, the whole idea of bigger and smaller kind of reverses. The more negative you are, the smaller you are. So in number 17, they have the same number of places. Which one's more negative? Which one's more negative? Yeah, minus 0 0.31. So that one must be the smaller one. So be real careful when they bring negatives into play. It just adds that extra. It's reverse of what you would normally think, right? OK. And of course, with number 18, they have negatives and they don't have the same number of places. So which one do I add a 0 to? So 701 versus 710, which one's more negative? Which one's more negative? 710. That's more negative, right? 710 is bigger than 701. So this is more negative. So this one is less. That one is bigger. Cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And I know in the back of all your minds is probably a little bit of what the hell is all this really good for anyway, but I mean, we run into decimals all the time. The, these real quick comparisons we make is going to save us money. It's going to help us figure out the best way to finance something. I mean, you have all these little uh, fractional parts that would be your interest rates and all. And if you can't handle decimals, you're not going to be able to make a quick comparison between things. So that's why this is some important for something. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. So one thing we're going to do later when we start looking at multiplying and dividing is how to estimate something. So you make sure that your answer makes sense. Because I love it when a student turns in a problem like 2.7 times 11. How would I estimate 2.7 times 11? Oh, sorry about 2.7 is about 3, and 11 is about 10. So what's 3 times 10? 30. So I'll have somebody give this to me, and they'll say the answer is you know 270-something. Obviously, they didn't know how to handle the decimal places or something, but you should be able to kind of know from the beginning. It should be close to 30. So when your answer comes out 270-something, you're like, oh, shit, I must have made a problem with my decimals. So you don't want to give an answer like that that's just obviously wrong, but it's also not your fault if you've never been shown how to estimate what it is. Estimation kicks ass, because then you're allowed to make it not decimals anymore. Now, you can't give that as your answer, but it's a really cool way to make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay. So how do I do 2.7 times 11, since I have it up here? I like it. So how do I do it? Let me catch up to you. So I, I, the decimal does not bother me at all as I'm doing the problem. Don't even try to figure out how to stick it in there. You stick it in there at the end. Careful up here. <laughs> There's always got to be at least one. And actually, it would normally be me, but I'm up here saying it, so I can't do it. So 7 times 11, so it's 77. 0, 22, right? So 297. So I would have somebody tell me the answer is 297. But we already know that doesn't make any sense. It should be about 30. 
So that tells me, oh crap. Yeah, the decibel, how many places are there? One. one. Move it back, one, 29.7. Cool. So when you multiply decimals, nothing really changes about the process at all. At the very end, you count the total number of places and you make that same number of places in your answer. That's, that's at the very end. <laughs> I love you guys. Let's see. <laughs> it's always something. Um, all right. Now, how about this one? This is neat. A new dining room set costs $1,295.86. Finance for one year. Find the monthly payments rounded to the nearest cent. So if it costs $1,295.86 totally, finance for one year, and I, I'm assuming they're not going to make me pay any interest, which is nice. Um, find the monthly payments. So of course, I want to know per month. Right now, that's for 12 months. What do I do to find out how much it is per month? What operation? Division. Division. I want to break 1295 up into 12 parts for each month. That's what you think about and you had to figure out which operation to apply. I want to break that up. Don't multiply by 12. That would so suck. You want to, that times 12 per month. The store is like, dude, come buy anything you want, anytime. <laughs> not a good way to be. Um, so 12. Now, this is not the hard problem, really. The hard division, the problem that we're having in the homework is when this number has a decimal. And that's really throwing us off. But I still see a few people not lining things up right. If you line things up right, the decimal goes right where it is. So what do I mean by lining things up right? 12 goes into 12. One. You put the 1 there. I still see people putting the 1 here and then messing themselves up. In fact. If I wanted to estimate this, I wouldn't make this 1,300 to tell you honestly. I'd make it 1,200 because then 12 goes into it evenly. So what's 1,200 divided by 12? 100, right? Ah, so I like to count. So 1,200 divided by 12 is 100. That's one cool way to look at that. 1,200 divided by 12 is 100. So I know my answer should be a little bit more than 100 because this is a little bit more than 1,200. I know my answer should be a little more than 100, not 1,000. Again, they'll be happy if you're paying $1,000. Here, figure out your own payments. Sweet, 1,000 a month. So this is not anything different, really. It's just going to have a decimal right there. The division steps aren't different. Does 12 go into 9? So put a zero here. I still see some people not realizing that if it doesn't go in, you put a zero. So now you say it's 12 going to 95. Seven. Yeah, seven would be 84. So you get one, one. Now, real quick, and again, just bear with me if this is old news. I know I'm on the right track because 11 is less than 12. If I get a number here that's bigger than 12, it's trying to tell me that I didn't put a big enough number here. I still see people getting confused in the middle of a problem because they didn't put a big enough number here. I don't blame you for being, I would be confused too. That number has got to be less than what you're dividing by for it to say, oh yeah, you gave it enough 12s. If this was a 13, there's still another 12 in there. You should have done one more 12 up here. Okay, maybe, maybe. So 118, 12 goes into 118. Yeah, it's got to be 9 because it's almost 10 for 120, right? Yeah. So then you subtract, bring down the 6. 8. No, 7. 8. 8. So 8 times 12, 96. Subtract, there's another 10. So what's going to happen here? Not, yeah. Yeah, where does it say nearest cent? Cool. One more time. This is the last time here, right? To get to the nearest cent, I need to go out. Here's the nearest cent. I need to find out what that number is there. And of course, what's it going to be now that I have 100 here again? It's trying to be 100. It's going to be another 8 here, right? So that, and then I can now, if I round this to the nearest cent, that would be this place. What would it be? 99, because that's an 8 that should go up to 9. I love it. And that sounds about right for everywhere in the world doing 
99 cents. Right? Psychologically, it works, actually. We're, we're suckers for those. OK, cool. Uh, let's see if I have to do a lot with this here. I think this is going pretty well. Adding, subtracting decimals. Not too bad, I, I don't think. What's the main thing to worry about when you're adding, subtracting decimals? Keeping the decimals. Good, lining that decimal place up. Um, and we're not yet at the point where you can just use a calculator to do this. That makes the homework go by really fast. But you have to do this by hand for now, just to get used to it. So just to do one example, um, to line this up, 6.95. Let me write this whole thing over again, actually. 57.4, 6.95, and then 0 0.084. So if I really wanted to, I can put in a couple zeros to help me have everything in place here. What I'm seeing a few people doing is really, for subtraction, it's very necessary to have those zeros in there. So we'll do a subtraction problem, then we'll move on. So here you just add like always four, three, bring the one up, four, put the point in there, bring the one up. Did I do all that right? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, 1 and 4 is 5, and 9 is 14. Oh, okay. You're good. Don't worry, man. Normally, when I make a mistake, it's with something like that. I'm like, damn. Because I do the mistake though, that a lot of us do, which is to try to get a problem done quickly. And that's when you start making really stupid little mistakes. Now, number 7 would be where I have some people having some trouble. 6 minus 4.12. So I'm seeing a lot of this. Now, what did this person do? Didn't take the zeros. They sort of added the last half and then subtracted the first half. They didn't subtract 2 from 0. They just said, this is empty space. <laughs> so then nothing really happens to the 12. No, it's not empty space. How should I write this? Yeah, 6.00 minus 4.12. Now I've got like 600 minus 412. Do you see that? The more comfortable you get with decimals, the more you can start to realize you can look at it as 600 minus 412. As long as you put the decimal in at the end. You can look at it that way, and then it's not that hard of a problem. So, of course, this you do like always. i got to borrow to make the 10, to make that 9, so I can borrow to make that 10. <laughs> right? So everything's the same here. I just got to make sure my decimal is right there. So I get 1.88. Cool. So be real careful about, especially with subtraction, you've got to put those zeros in. So you see that you're going to have to borrow in those cases. Now, just in case you're curious, to do this problem, you could do my shortcut that I showed before. I'm going to show it again. Oh, crap. Don't. All right, stay. You could make this, and if you don't like this shortcut, please don't do it. If you don't understand quite why this works, never do it. You could make this 5.99 minus 4.11. Because the difference between 6 and 4.12 is the same as the difference between 5.99 and 4.11. They're the same distance apart. So I always like to say, this is not cheating. This is beautiful. This is making an easier problem because you understand how numbers work. There's not a damn thing wrong with making the problem easier by applying an idea. That's what math is all about. Math is constantly trying to make things easier. That's hard. What's an easier way to do it? So now, of course, we get the same thing, but it's a lot easier to see. 1.88, that was easy. All right, cool. You still have to know how to borrow. <laughs> I'm not trying to say. You never have to have that skill ever again. But this is a good idea for these cases. Whole numbers minus fraction parts, you can make it one cent less or whatever. OK. So I'm not going to focus too much on adding, subtracting, besides saying that one thing. You, have, you really put those zeros in for the subtraction problems. Be careful about that. Now here's the multiplying thing. We already talked about the multiplying thing. 
Um, if I have 0 0.03 times 0 0.7, Notice how now I do not have to line those decimals up. You do not have to add a zero at the end of seven. You only have to do that for add and subtract. And guys, guys, let me make this point. I just realized something that really brings everything together. If I add 0.5 to 0.11, put a zero in there and make it easier to see. I technically, I can add those, but what I'm really doing when I'm adding them is putting this 0 0.50, right? Yeah. And the cool thing to realize, what is 0 0.5? What is it as a fraction, 0 0.5? Uh, oh, uh, don't reduce it. 5 tenths plus, what's 0 0.11? 11 hundredths. Could I add 5 tenths plus 11 hundredths? Yes. The way it is? Oh. So if I have 5 tenths plus 11 hundredths, I definitely cannot add those, right? So I have to multiply this by 10 in this case. Now I could add them and make 61 over 100, right? And what do you get up here? 0.50 plus 0.11 is 0.61. So the idea of adding zeros, you definitely have to do it when you subtract. And we sort of subconsciously do it when we add. We know there's a zero there when we add. But the reason we do that is so that we make them like terms. They have like denominators. It's the same idea. Putting zeros on at the end of decimals, making them like terms. Making them have like denominators. Cool. All right, that was exciting. So <laughs> to multiply this, I want you to realize, especially this problem here, that is basically 7 times 3, which is 21. But how many times do you have to move the decimal now? Yeah, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, and then to do this one, 0. Good. So it would be 0 0.021. I love it. So what you could really do is forget about the decimals, especially when they're small like that. If I have 0. 0.00008 times 0. 0.00006, that's basically 8 times 6. That's 48. And then I just count back, 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 back. So you guys kind of with me? Yeah. So if you have uh, three, three decimal, I mean one decimal behind three numbers, in front of three numbers, and in in the, in the, in the another line you have two decimal, uh, decimal in front of two numbers, that would be five of the five that you have. Yeah. So if I had something like this. Yeah. So you just multiply directly. I'll do it kind of quickly and make sure that I do this right. Make sure you have five zero. I mean, point five zero. I mean, five numbers behind. Right. Okay, that's exciting. Watching me multiply two numbers. Hopefully that's right. Yay, Jeff. All right. Now you just count, like Charles said. You just count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And look at the original problem. Stay with me now. The original problem was this. Let me take all that movement around out. Estimate this. 1.013 is basically 1. So 1 times this should be itself. And that's we got basically 0.41. It's a little bigger because it's a little more than 1. So I know my answer should come out to be about 0.41 because I'm multiplying by basically 1 here, right? So if I get 41, whoa, that is way off. I just didn't move my decimal back enough. OK, cool. So there's nothing new here, really. The only new piece is at the very end, you count back enough. OK. Oh, so the one thing I do want to talk about is, since our number system is based on 10, when we multiply or divide by multiples of 10, by uh, powers of 10, when I multiply or divide by 10, 100, 1,000, it should be easy to do. Our number system is based on 10. So who knows what happens when I have like um, 41.7 divided by 10. What's a quick way to do that? That's if I multiply by 10, I increase it. When I divide by 10, when I divide by 10, everything gets a factor of 10 smaller. 
So everybody kind of shifts over one place. If I have 40, what's that divided by 10? 40 divided by 10 is 4. See how it changed? It went from four, the 10's place to the 1's place. So really, all I do, that 4 <laughs> wants to go to the 1's place. That 1 wants to go to the 10's place. Because what's 1 divided by 10? A 10th, right? So what happens when you divide by a power of 10 is the decimal moves back that many places. It moved once because there's one tenth. So if I did 41.7, Jeff, you could do it, divided by 1,000, how many times do I have to move the decimal back? Three. Three. I see three zeros. That means it's got three tens in there. So I have 417. It starts here. One, two, three. So 0 0.0417. Booyah. Some of you guys might realize, have, has anybody ever done scientific notation? We're not going to suddenly do that now. A few of you guys. So this kind of leads into that. If you have never done it, you will. Don't worry, you will. And of course, the reverse kind of happens if I multiply 0 0.0391 times 10,000. How many times should I move the decimal place here? Four times, because I see four zeros. You with me? But now it should get bigger, because I'm multiplying by tens, not dividing by tens. So I'm going to move it this way. One, two, go over here, Jeff. So you said four times. One, two, three, four. So now it's 391. And another way to look at that, how do you say this? In English, what do you say? Not 0 0.0391. 391 tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands. So 391 over 10,000 times 10,000, the 10,000s would cancel. So you would get 391. That's a whole other way to look at it. So 0 0.0391 times 10,000. Stay with me now. This is 391 out of 10,000, right? Because it's in the tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands place, right? right. Times 10,000, what happens to those ten thousands? Cancel, so I get 391. Now, I would not do this. It's an explanation as to why this works. That's why I do just move the decimal place four times in this case. How many zeros I see? How are we doing? So when you divide, of course, it gets smaller. It moves back. When you multiply, it gets bigger, it moves forward, but you still move at this number of zeros you see. That's awesome. That's the way it should be. Our number system based on 10, it should play well with 10s, right? And it does. OK. Uh, one extra little thing they throw in here for some reason is the circumference of a circle. And uh, there's a geometry section we're going to get to eventually, but I don't know if any of you guys have ever done this. If you actually take a string, someday I'll actually do this. Take a string and do it like around the base of a trash can or something, something circular, right? So you can measure how long the string is. And then you put it around the, the circle. So now you get a circle. And you measure what the diameter is. Everybody with me so far? So you measure how long the string is. And then you put it into a circle and you measure how long the diameter is. I don't care how big the string you start with is. When you do, and somebody help me out, if you do measure the length of the string. So here's my string. Then I put it into a circle. The length of the string is the what of the circle? Circumference. Cool. So this is C. If I take C divided by D, so if I take the circumference, the length of the string, divided by the diameter it makes when it makes a circle, it will always be the same number. It's going to be that number. 3, 4, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, blah, 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 blah. So that freaked a lot of people the hell out. Way back in history. This is something we all know now. We're all like, oh, yeah, pi. Everybody's going to math people about pi. They had to be invented. They had to figure out what symbol to use for it. They thought it was a magical, they thought it was a godly number. They thought it was something given to us by God. So they wanted to give us a special symbol. Right? So if I took the earth. It's not quite circular, but let's pretend it is. To the Earth and took the circumference of the Earth and divided by the diameter of the Earth, 
it's pi. Particular atom. The, the circumference of the atom divided by the diameter of the atom, it's pi. <laughs> So that freaked a lot of people out. So a lot of people, the Egyptians, the Greeks, a lot of people had different approximations for this. Nowadays, we just ask a computer for it, and it's able to do it out to the five millionth place. I don't know where they are now. And then you have these contests where people memorize places of this. And I'm like, I don't have that many synapses left open in my brain. I, I do 3.14159, that's it. That's all I care about. All right. So that's neat. So this actually tells me the circumference. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. If I multiply the d up, there's the formula for circumference. Some of you guys might know that. How are we doing so far? So there will be a few problems in this section where they give you a circle and they tell you the diameter. Let's say it's seven feet. So the circumference would be pi times seven. Now, they'll tell you pi is approximately 3.14. People use that. And that's why March 14th is pi day for math geeks. March 14th at 159. So, March 14th. Um, so, but on your calculator, to do this, you either have a pi button on your calculator or you can just use 3.14. So, if I want to approximate this, what would this be? What number would this be? 3.14 times 7? Approximately, that's a little bit bigger than what? 3.14 times 7 is a little bit bigger than 21. It's maybe 22, yeah? So yeah, it comes out to be what? 22 point, let's see, 8, 2, actually comes out to be 21.98 feet. All right. How are we doing so far? Does it sound familiar? Have you guys seen that before? I don't know if you've ever been explained it this way. This formula wasn't come up with. This ratio was examined the hell out of. And then you multiply the D up. Oh, it's a formula now. OK, maybe All right. So let me see. What's the last thing I want to have you guys work on here? There's one last, thing. oh, here we go, perfect. Here we go. So here's the one that was giving us a lot of trouble when I was grading homework. Um, and I explained why this works last time. But what is it, tell me what it is I have to do here and then I'll back step and show you why we do that. What must I do here to make this something I can even attempt? Yeah, move this. If I move this decimal over once, I better also move this one over once. So it becomes 8 into 4.8. Oh. oh. And the reason that works, how would I write this problem? How do I write that problem? Oops, sorry. I'm mixing my problems. Get out of there. How do I write that problem as a fraction? Oh, yeah. What am I dividing by? Eight yeah, 0. 0.8. And what am I dividing into? The other one, 4, 8, right? So that's how I write that division problem as a fraction. Are you guys with me so far? In case you wanted to. That's certainly doable because that division bar, that bar means division. So it's the same thing. If I multiply the top and bottom by 10, won't that make the bottom a whole number now? Because how many times do you have to move the decimal to make this a whole number? Eight. Once. So multiply by 10. So if I move, so what that really means is that if I move the bottom by 1, that's multiplying by 10. I better move the top by 1 because I have to do the same thing to the top and bottom. So when it's in this form, that translates to if I have to move this over once, this has to also move over once. Then when you do the problem, oh, sorry. Oh, everybody else is kind of like, yeah. <laughs> Glad you're there. Move this over once. That has to move over once, so then I can do the problem. The answer is going to be the same because they're equivalent fractions. They're the same fraction. So 8 goes into 48 six times, and you just make sure the decimal goes where it's supposed to. So 0.6. 
Let me see. Do they have a? Here's a more interesting one. No, they don't. Here. Number three is a little more interesting. How many times have they moved the decimal on number three? Two. Twice. So once, twice. And so how many times in here? Twice. One, two. You guys semi with me? So now the answer is, of course, going to be 300. I love it. Okay. I think that was the last thing I wanted to do. Yes. Yep. Let's see. So let me give you guys a couple of problems to try, and then we'll actually head out a little early. Unless anybody has a problem with that. <laughs> All right, so try these out, guys. Call me over if you need some help.